What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, well, we had quite a bit happen across a couple different timelines, right? We found out that Temyoji was able to find Quark, and that was of course only when we betrayed Luna the first time, because we had to betray Luna yet again, and that's led us to the timeline we're on currently. And now we are in the pantry. Something that came to mind in light of last episode, thinking about betraying Luna twice, it actually put the context... Well, it, it changed how I viewed those initial words from the opening of this game. It's talking about... It's sort of like venting a frustration with not being able to trust anyone, and then concluding from that, not being able to trust anyone, then everybody should die. And honestly, it makes me think that Luna might actually be zero. Just as like a little sliver, it's a, it's really a speculation more than any sort of deduction, but it's something. So, I wanted to at least express that before I lost that thought. And let me, I'm gonna have to adjust the mic real quick. Okay, you guys might not have noticed the difference, but that um, should be a little bit better on my end at least. Okay, so we've got a pantry here. These are some pretty impressive shelves. That's a lot of prepackaged food. There's a bunch of instant coffee and boxers of boxers of tea. Uh, you mean boxes, right? Oh, they're continuing with the underwear puns. Ah, <laughs> it's pretty funny. What is this over here? It reminds me of one of those like puzzles, strength puzzle, or like the ice puzzles from old Pokemon games. I wonder what this thing is. Well, it's full of ice cubes. Do you think maybe it's an ice machine? It's pretty big for something like that. Maybe it's an industrial ice machine. These look like handles, right? I wonder if you can lift it open. Let me give it a shot. Big boy Sigma. Ugh, no good. Won't even budge. <laughs> I love the little reaction they did with both Alice and Clover there. Um, let's see, so there's an unlock button and a lock button. This appears to be a graphic of some sort. There's a small hole to the right of it. Interesting. So, we'll need some sort of key, I'd imagine, to unlock that. What's this over on the left-hand side, though? Button parts. So something will screw into this. What is this? A button? Looks like it. Are these threads cut into the side, or inside? So, like a female screw. Maybe we can combine it with something else and make it a bit more useful. Okay. We have an empty beaker here. This is a beaker. There's nothing in it. Why, thank you, Alice. Really appreciate your insights. So then over here we have the safe. This is a safe, right? Yeah, it's just like the one in the AB room and in the infirmary. So all we need is a password. Should be just like the others. No good. I can't get it open. Well, of course not yet, Sigma, please. What do we have here? We've got some fractions on the lower right-hand side that are color-coded, and then we've got these little shelves, I guess? Or these little drawers, drawers on the left-hand side? What do you think this machine is? The bottom part looks like some kind of dolly. It's got this 5x5 five five grid of metal boxes. The top row is empty, though. Yeah. Do you think we're supposed to put something in them? Well, not something, I guess. Probably more boxes. Hmm. I'm really curious about these fractions here. Fractions? No, I think these are pages from a day calendar. Oh, <laughs> that's actually really funny. The blue ones are Saturdays, and the red ones are Sundays. So the black numbers are weekdays? So it was blue is Saturday, and red is Sunday, right? Looks like they're from January 13th, March 27th, May 7th, July 30th, and November 11th. Hmm. Okay. We'll keep that in mind. Empty container for basic water. Okay. An empty plastic container. It says basic water. So does that mean we're supposed to put basic water in here? <laughs> it's pretty funny. And then we have another one for basic water. What do we have here? Neutral water. All right, and then this will be acidic water. That says definitely don't drink that one. 
What can we do with the screen here? Hmm. The screen's dark. Maybe it's not on? Looks like there's a card slot right under it. Do you think maybe there's a connection? <laughs> Almost certainly. I'm glad I opened that. I wasn't sure what we'd find there. Hey, there's something in the drawer. Huh. Wonder what it is. A metal piece. This looks like something we can combine with the other button part to recreate that button. So now that we have a button... Huh? What, what, what was that sound effect? Whoa! What are you doing? You broke it! We have a warm drawer, apparently? Why do we have a drawer? Whoa, what the heck? This drawer is warm! <clears throat> That's ridiculous! Why would a drawer just be... You're kidding! It really is warm! What's going on here? You took this out of the dolly, right? Yeah. Then maybe it's for heating food up. Someone could have used it recently, so there's still some residual warmth. Yeah, that's a fair point. So let's, before I forget to use the button on what we've already created, or the areas we've already investigated, let's check out if we can use it down here. We can. There we go. It should be in there pretty good now. Yeah, looks good to me. Well, why don't you go ahead and push it? That should unlock the top, it seems. And there. Did you hear that? Yeah, sounds like the lock opened. So we can open it? I'd assume so, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Oh, what? It's not even like... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what is going on? I thought that was like water with ice cubes in it on the very top. Wouldn't it all be spilling now? Huh? So it is supposed to open. The real question is, is there anything inside? Oh, it's empty. I wonder why. It looks like I can open it from both sides. See? I think you could do that from the front or back too. Then there's no hinge, it's just one huge lid. It's just sitting on top of the bottom. Hmm. Hey. Does it look like there's something inside that ice cube to you? Yeah, you're right. I wonder if we can get to it. Well, we won't just be grabbing it, that's for sure. This glass is in the way. Oh, there's glass on top of that? How about dropping it through that hole? Hole? There's a square hole down here, see? I think you just need to slide the ice cube into it. I knew it'd be one of those puzzles. How? I really have to explain it? Alright, fine, just pay attention. You can slide the ice cubes by clicking and dragging the mouse or using the arrow keys. Move the ice cube with something in it to the hole in the front. You can slide four of the ice cubes, but there's a limit to the number of times each one can be moved. Once you've reached the limit, the ice cube will freeze in place. Okay, got it. Here goes. Interesting. So how do we want to move everything around? My first inclination is to do this. And then what we can do is we can... Oh, we slide the whole thing like that. Okay, I did not realize that was how it was going to work. But um, but that's okay. Hmm. So I think we do this again, and then like that as well. And then we can do that. Uh, that's still not what I wanted. Hmm. I'm curious, what will it look like when they're frozen in place? That's what it'll look like. So we'll retry. How do I want to do this? So obviously it's initially left or right. I'm tempted to go right and then down again. So, we may need to make some, I guess, some extraneous movements just to get something to freeze in place. For example, if I go right and then down and then down again, will that work? No, it won't. Interesting. So instead, if I go were to go right and up and then down, that would be different, right? So now if I go to the right, that should freeze in place? No, it doesn't. Okay, okay. So yeah, we have to very carefully plan when things are going to freeze in place. 
Alright. So I think we have one more on this. Okay. Now the question is, how many more moves do we have on this one? I think only one, right? Ooh, and that was not... It was almost certainly not the way to go. We needed that one to go to the right and then down. So we used one too many moves there. Because once we get that one down, we should be able to move this other one fairly easily. Yeah. So, let's think here. I do like the idea of right and then up. Notably, that one there is still freezing while all this is going on. So, this one here doesn't have three to spare. It's only got two. Hmm. What if... What if I went down here? Nah, that ain't it. <laughs> that definitely ain't it. It is worth noting though, once that block is there, Via this left side, what I can do is more or less access the right side. So, for example, if I were to go, like, the standard entrance like that, and then go left and down, I can then go left, down... Oh wait, no, I'm still one short. Hmm. Then that's not gonna be useful. So how else... How else to make this work? What are some other good alternatives? I don't think this is actually that bad of an idea to have one down there, and then try to get this one on the right frozen there. Oh, but it wasn't, it didn't freeze on that. I am not counting these super well, but that's okay-ish, I guess. And now I think this one should freeze there, too. No, it didn't! I know it says four moves for each of them, but I'm having a tough time telling when they're moving, even if they're kind of kept stationary, right? So, in this case, for example, I move to the right, and then up, and then down. And then I think I still have two left to go here, so I can go right like that. And now, I should... No, I still won't be okay. I should have gone, oh, why did I do that? I should have gone left and then down and right. So basically, mm, that's still not gonna work though, is it? I don't have enough uses. That's already a situation I've run into. So what if instead of doing that, I were to take an approach where I kind of build up blocks from the left. And now I bring these across like that, and this comes down. I feel like that's a little bit more efficient. Mmm... I want to be able to move the the one with the thing in it. Looks like a looks like a card. So that's probably what we can use to activate that other machine, right? But if I go to the right, I feel like this is gonna freeze up. Well, I don't think it actually matters either way. I'm still gonna be making the same number of moves. Hmm. So that obviously did not work. What's interesting to note is how many moves that took. Yeah, I'm definitely not understanding very well the, uh, the moves. So let's experiment. I mean, this first one starts off kind of out of there. So let's look at this 
nice fresh one at the bottom of this column of three at the top. If I move it once, twice, three times, four times. Okay, so from like a fresh, I don't know, unminted or like unimpacted uh, block, it'll take four moves like the instructions say. What I'm curious about is why the one with the card in it hasn't already been affected by the ice. I think it's maybe while it's inside those three blocks, it doesn't work. Hmm, I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to think about it regardless. How can I slide these in? What I need to do is basically just stack to the right, I think. But the problem with that... Ooh, yeah, so I need to line up multiple in a row. Hmm. So if I were to do something like that... Mm, that's still not going to do it, though, is it? Because every time I move those down... Because if I could just stack on the right-hand side, that would be really convenient, but... It's just not going to happen, unfortunately. Because that's what happens every single time. And that's not all that helpful. However, it does show that if I'm able to stack the two blocks in the lower right like that, and then move that third block to the left, I should be able to create a path. So, let's see here. If I do right, down, and then, and then what? Up. Oh, so that one only had one more to it. So let's go left, right, and then down, and then right, and then down, and then right, and then down, and that one locks in place. So that was that was one too many moves for that particular block. It's taking me longer than I expected, actually, but it's a fun puzzle. I like these types of I like these types of puzzles. Hmm. Right and up is probably a good way to go about it. But now I'm concerned about this other block that's next to the thing with the item in it. I think we only have one, two more moves with it. We only have one with that one. Oh wait, no, that might actually work out nicely then. Or rather, no, it, it doesn't. Hmm. So that didn't work out. <laughs> so what I'm trying to do in my head, can I write? I, can, I guess I can sort of draw over this. <clears throat> what I'm trying to do is set up some sort of block so that my final move from a particular block will lead me there. So if I set up a block here, that'll work well. If I set up a block below here, I guess. That'll work well. If I set up a block below there, that'll work well. You know, that, that sort of thing. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to work backwards from, to kind of clue you guys into at least where my brain is at currently. I could try to set up a little kind of passage like that. And then what I can do Ooh, do I want to do another right, though? I only have two more left with this ice block up top. That's not really where I want to be right now. Yeah, and that's kind of problematic. Not quite. Not quite. 
I'm shocked. It feels like it's inconsistent with how many moves I'm, I actually have. So there's something I'm misunderstanding here. So I think I have three moves with this current whited out block. Let's see here. One, two, three. Okay, so that's correct. Now, the question is, when does the counter start on the other block? So if I move this one to the right, it doesn't. But as soon as I move this one down, it counts for that one particular block. So I only have three moves left with that block now. So what I could do is one like that, two like that, and now I only have one more with that block I was just referring to, and it seems I only have three moves with that block at the top. And I think that's a good, I think that's accurate. So if I go right, left, why does this one activate? It's not moving at all. Ah. Um, I mean, I could go right and that'll go like that. This like kind of works, I guess. No, it doesn't, because I still needed one more on that particular block. So yeah, there's still something I'm not understanding very well. Hmm. This... Could this work well? I only have, I think I have three moves left on that. So I think I should actually be okay if I do this, and then one, and then two down like that. Oh, not quite. Darn it. Hmm. You know, there's actually a different way that I could get a uh, a block in the position I, I hadn't even thought about before, though. And I think that's if I do this. Wait, no. That's not what I wanted. Oh, that's right. I only have three moves with this one. But I guess the, I, the logic applies to, to both of them. Although, as soon as I do that, this one also only has three blocks left. So if I instead do something like one, two, three, which seems silly, and I only have two left, I think, on this one, what I could do is that, and that's going to lock in place. Hmm. But that's not helpful, because I think I only have two moves left with this one, too. Yeah. It would be nice if there was a different visual for how many moves each block had left. Like a different texture. Because I know it changes, but there's not one, you know, for each thing needed. I'm going to think on this one for a minute, and if I have any new ideas, I'll let you guys know. But I don't want to bore you. So I guess a new potential path I'm actually seeing is if I'm able to get this key card to go here, and then into here somehow, I can eventually get it to go like that. And if there's already a block here, I can get it to go down there. So that's one potential path that I'm seeing. Not that I think it's actually all that likely. Because I think that would take more than four moves with that block alone. I mean, in general, this path is something I've been focusing on, right? So I've been trying to think, how can I stack two blocks here? Or how can I, I don't know, stack, um, what was I thinking on the left-hand side?
Okay. Whew. Finally got it. It took me way longer than I expected. But, um, it was good. I guess towards the end, I was trying to think of alternative ways I could slide two blocks into that same area. And I was so focused on the right-hand side of the board, but I neglected to see how the left-hand side could actually build up a similar little wall without that extra lip that third block tended to make on the right-hand side. But eventually, ha, it worked. Good job, Sigma. Open it up. We should be able to get that ice cube now. All right. Ice cubes. So there's the visitor idea. I'd imagine we have to combine this with the warm drawer so that we can, uh... oh, you know what? I wonder if we put it back in that machine and that will warm it up. Um, all right. Now to put the drawer and the ice back inside. But yeah, that was, a, that was a fun puzzle. I actually like thinking about those quite a bit. Oh, you hear that? It's probably warming up right now. We should probably keep an eye on it. Three hours later. Sounds like it's done. Open it up and have a look. Nice. Hey, look, the water from the ice melted. Ah, hot. The card's underneath the water. Okay, here goes. Ah, are you okay? Just kidding. Dick move. <laughs> so here we have a visitor ID. Huh, a visitor ID. Who would be visiting a place like this, right? So what do you think the deal is with the card? Well, it says visitor ID on it, so wouldn't it be for like authenticating or something? We might be able to use it to activate something. Yeah, I mean, I know what it's for, but I miss, I guess in the larger picture, right? Machine on a dolly. There we go. Now I'm able to zoom in. Here's what looks like a card slot below the monitor. All right, let's slide this baby in. Yeah. Go for it. Hey, what's going on? Looks like it's on now. Why is the screen red? Do you, see, do you think something's wrong? Wait. It says something. Number of ration boxes insufficient. Please rectify. Cannot verify presence of acidic water vessel. Please rectify. Cannot verify presence of neutral water vessel. Please rectify. Cannot verify presence of basic water vessels. Please rectify. Okay, so we obviously need to place the different drawers here. The real question is... Is there... Um... Can I place them? Hmm... It's not really letting me do that. So maybe I need to find the fifth one first. Maybe I combine it with the other ones? No? Alright, well I'll try one of the basic water ones. And it doesn't seem to be giving me much. Alright, well I guess... I guess we'll explore the rest of the room? I mean, we focused on this perspective quite a bit, we still have a lot to explore. Large shelves. They're full of prepackaged preserved food. Anything over here, though, is the question. Why the heck do they put a cabinet back in a corner like this? It's really hard to get to. Agreed. It's got a sliding door, which is at least nice given its location. Alright, let's slide it then, and what do we find? What's this? A binder? It's got a couple pieces of paper inside. We probably ought to hang on to them, huh? You found a nut nutritional management chart and a nutritional balance chart can review them in the archive. Okay, not sure why those will be relevant yet, but... See this red button? I think it keeps the wheel in place. So if we push it, it'll unlock. I think we can move this thing if we release all the locks. Sounds good. Let's get to it then. And then once we move the cart, are we all good to go? Oh, or rather, there's gonna be a cart on the other side. All right, all the wheel locks should be released now. Good, let's see if we can move this thing. Seems we are able to move this thing. And now we can open this door. Okay, let's have a look inside. And we have another file, there's a binder here too. And this is, what, some kind of chemical? Let's take that binder first. 
a pH scale. Lovely. Now the chemical. pH test. Oh, so it's a d pH detection chemical. This is a chemical for testing pH. Um, you can use it to test how basic or acidic something is. Didn't you ever do that in school? You put it in water and the water changes color depending on the basicity or acidity? Yes. I do remember doing such things in chemistry class. Alright, so let's take a look around. Oh, there's actually... Well, no, there's still a decent amount to explore. Let's look at this first. What's this thing? Well, it's got a faucet, so... I think it's connected to the water storage tank up there. So you'd use it to pour water? Yeah, but it probably mixes basic water and acidic water to create a certain pH. Yeah, there's a drain, too. Oh yeah, in the middle there. The drain. I could get rid of water here. Yeah, so, I mean, clearly we put the beaker in here, right? At least, I think so. Well, maybe not. What about up by the faucet, then? Let's fill this beaker. Water-filled beaker. Okay. Can we combine it with the... Beaker? Yes. Water-filled beaker. And notably, it's kind of greenish, right? So let's examine it now. Oh, hey, look at that. The pH detection chemical worked. It's a sort of yellow-green. Well, going by the pH color scale we got, it looks like the pH of this solution is 6. Hmm. This is the water you get from the zero button, right? Right. The water you got when you pressed down the zero button had a pH of 6, right? That would mean, so if you push the plus 1, then you get a pH of 7? Yeah, maybe. Sounds about right. So let's see if I can combine this with the acidic water. Oh, no, I guess not. Well, then I don't really know what the point is, but I mean, I guess I can make neutral water by doing plus one. Am I supposed to drain this? I guess so, down the drain with you, and we're back to an empty beaker. So now, I believe we have some neutral water. We can potentially combine these, right? Water-filled beaker, examine. This appears to be water with a pH of seven. Cool. So actually, I, so I guess you can use this to adjust the pH of the water that comes out. Depending on what button you press, you get acidic water or basic water. The value on each button determines the degree of acidity or the degree of basicity, right? The water from the, yep, yep, yep. Um, what I wanted to do was see if I could put this in the container for the neutral water. Cannot combine these items. Hmm. It says it's an empty container. Maybe once I have all of the containers and, you know, can do that, that'll be what I need to do there, but I'm really not sure. So let's see what this is on the right hand side. Oh, hey, the screen lit up. Looks like it's designed to turn on when you touch it. I think we need to type something in. Yeah. Enter the most appropriate option in the blank area. Alright, let me give it a shot. Hmm. Well, that's certainly interesting. Oh! So, it's a set of three numbers, a letter, and then a number. Well, we clearly don't have the information for that yet. Huh. I don't get it. Hey, this is from a calendar, right? Yeah, it looks a little weird, though. Found a calendar, we can review it in the archive. Wait! I think there's something written on the back of it. The day the man was abducted. Oh yeah, there is something back here. I found a note on the back of the calendar. You can review it in the archive. Uh, they won't show me the calendar right away? So calendar first half of the year, I think, right? Hmm. I'm not really sure how we're supposed to use this just yet. Obviously, it's relevant given the numbers on that machine. But I'm not sure what we're gaining from this chart that we weren't able to gain from just looking at the dates. Let's look at the nutritional balance. In one week, A, B, C, D, and E. Notably, there's a red line. Hmm. Box lunch nutrient balance. One week, A, B, C, D, E, maybe being the different weekdays. And so we'll have to correlate 
oh, we'll probably have to pick some combination of box lunches to meet a particular balance. That seems, uh... The day the man was abducted. I don't know if we can really determine that just yet, but look at the sets of numbers up top. I think this is going to be what our what's going to get us our answer on the right hand side there. Is that a separate cart? No, it isn't. It's just the same one. Really quickly though, before I forget. Okay, so we can't access the second cabinet. What do we have here? So these are all drawers, huh? Yeah, tons of them. Um, wow, how many are there? I wonder. 366. What? Yeah, clearly the the matchup or the appearance of this match is the calendar. I said there are 366 drawers. You just look at them and figure that out? No. I did math. They're divided into four sections. Each row is numbered 1 through 14. In other words, there are 14 rows in each section. The columns are labeled with the letters A through G. So you've got seven columns per section, and four sections means 28 columns total. Now each section has a few spots where there aren't any drawers, right? Well, specifically, there are 26 of those spots. So you just calculate 14 times 28 minus 26, and that's 366? Right. You did all of that in your head? Of course. It's pretty simple stuff. Alice, going up my uh, my tier list for the math. Okay. The shelves are divided into four sections. Additionally, each section, yep, can I, can I access them? Or is there nothing to do with them? I mean, clearly, these must correlate to certain things, right? Right? My impression was that I'd be interacting with these. Can I not open them? Do I need to try to cl like click on the very specific one I'm supposed to? So let's pick one. So 113, or 1111 is actually really easy. So if we go to 11, 1111 will be a blue one, right? So it's a Saturday, and it'll be the 11th one, right? Or rather, let's look at our archive again, just to be safe. So 1111 will be where? It'll be... The sixth row from the top on the far right. One, two, three, four, five, six. No luck. Hmm. Some of the pictures on these boxes look really tasty. I wonder what's under the wrapper. Under where? Under there! <laughs> Shut up. That's pretty funny. Um well I know I don't really know. Hmm. Not really sure where to proceed. Because I don't know where I can place the water. I don't seem to be able to interact with all of these. So, yeah, I'm really not sure. <clears throat> so, we have the different bins but I think we're missing one of them. It didn't seem like I could interact with them on that machine, unfortunately. And I didn't see another place that I could actually place them. Do I maybe try to use them on the, on the faucet? So, for example, if I were to do maybe like minus one, for example, and then use them on the faucet, could I fill them up that way? It seems so. Let's fill this thing. Okay. Can I use the... Test on this? Oh, I can't combine them? So I... Okay, so that's... This is kind of an inconvenience. Um, so what I have to do is drain the beaker and then fill up the beaker on the faucet and then use the pH test liquid on the beaker to make sure it's the right color, essentially. And I don't know if that's orange enough. Right? So let's drain it. And then we'll lower this again. And then we'll fill it up. It's not just going to let me pH test inside the uh, the container. So 
So here we are. That is probably the right orange. I'm not sure. The beaker's full of water I got by pressing the minus two button. After I put the pH detection chemical into it, the water turned orange. It appears to be water with a pH of four, like the water used in some beauty products. So I think we'll I think we'll stick with that actually. Let's change the water. So we have this water. This green neutral water would be at plus one. Feel confident saying that. So maybe after they're filled with water, I can put them back in that machine? And now the next thing is we need basic water, right? Wait, where's my... Where's my beaker? Okay, here it is. The question is how basic? Let's go to plus three. And see how that goes. Looks about right to me. So, let's fill up both of these guys with this basic water. At plus three, that's a pH of nine. Okay, so we have all of those filled up. Now what can we do with them is the question. Now we can place them. Okay, I see. I wonder if there's a particular order to it. For, out of curiosity, if I put acidic water, okay, we, so we don't have to worry about it. I wanted to see if I could put them outside of the order that they were originally in, and to see if it would auto-populate them back where they were originally were. So that confirms to me that order doesn't really matter. So now that all of those are there, let's try activating this again. Number of ration boxes insufficient. Please rectify. Number of ration boxes. So do I need to, I need to add five of these. And now the question is, which five? And I think that's what those post-it notes are telling me, is those are the five different boxes I can actually pull out. So let's look for January 13th and March 27th. January 13th is gonna be both of those are gonna be over here, right? So January 13th would be which of these? It would be this one, I think? Why can't I? Why can't I pull them out? Am I just clicking on the wrong one, maybe? No, I think that was the right one. It should be third row, third from the left. Third row, third from the left. But I'm pretty sure that's what I need to do, is pull five of the different containers. Oh, you know what? I bet this machine, like, loosens up one of them, right? So it's in the one, two, three category. Which row is it in? Um, it was third from the left, right? So it'd be E, and then it was what number? 13. Darn, I don't remember. Um, so let's take a look. How are they labeled again? Oh, so the number is the row. Gotcha. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, and then it'll be E, and then 3. That's how I interact with them. It's all coming together, guys. So 1, 2, 3, E and then three. More fireworks, lovely, lovely. First the thunderstorm, then fireworks. There, did it work? Look at the shelves, huh? The shelves, the drawers, whatever you want to call them. There we go. So there's one of them. And then the next one we said was going to be what? March something? We got a box of meat rations, okay. So next up was, what was it? Does it say March 27th? Okay, nope, that's not where I wanted to go. March 27th. March 27th is going to be where? March 27th will be the bottom row, second from the left. 
So it'll be the one, two, three again, and then it'll be B14. So let's do that. Okay. Look, another one. It just popped out. There we go. Okay, next up is going to be what? Five, seven? And then 730. So five, seven, and then 730. Five, seven is going to be which one of them? I think it's gonna be F2. So let's do that. Nope. I think I miscalculated. Yes, I don't worry, I, I got it, Sigma, I got it. I just didn't wanna have to pull up the archive, pull up the calendar again, and then look at it. So, five, seven, ah, oh, that's right, it starts with April instead of May, obviously. So, May 7th, and that's right, they, they mentioned it, it's a Sunday, so. May 7th in this case would be what row? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it'll be A7. Nice. Okay, there we go. Come on, drawer. And there it is. Lovely. Alright. Reconfirm the next one is what? 7.30. So that will be, actually, I'm just not even gonna bother. <laughs> Let's just look at the calendar and figure it out. 7.30 is going to be what? It will be the sixth row, first column. So A6. There we go. And that just is going to leave one of them left. That's four. Looks like there's another one. Okay, and the last one is right, 11, 11. So let's look at that again. 11, 11 is where? That is the sixth row on the far right. So that will be G. G6. That reminds me of like a song from when I was in high school, I think. Feeling so fly like a G6? Is that a, what? What song is that from? Why is that stuck in my head? I, mean, I probably haven't thought about that in years. Okay, that makes five. Come on, let's do this. All right, so now we can actually go wrap up, picking up all these boxes, and then we can head back to that machine. So the pasta rations. Gotta get that pasta power, or pasta power. salad rations and of course this fits into our you know nutritional info that we have from before so let's head on over to this machine and we can place all of the boxes nice that uh, we don't really need to worry about the order that we place them in here it's probably gonna be some mini game that we can interact with so now we can actually activate the screen look at the screen yeah the chart shows the nutrient values that each staff member requires for the next five days. Rearrange the order of the ration boxes so that they match these values. By dragging a box over another one, you can swap them. Right, let me give it a shot. Okay, so naturally this is going to be relevant um, because of our nutritional balance chart, right? So A, let's focus on A real quick. A requires how much orange? A requires one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight orange and 10, yeah, I'm actually just gonna write this down. <laughs> so, A requires eight orange, 10 red, and eight blue. B requires, what, seven orange, and nine red, and four, did I say blue? <laughs> That's really funny, uh, yellow, yellow. And then C is going to require how much? 
C is going to require one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Orange, 10 red, and then nine yellow. And then D is going to require eight orange again, 10 red again, nine yellow, and then E requires nine orange, 10 red, 10 yellow. So I'm gonna put a note up here, orange, red, yellow. Okay. And then let's see, we also get the box lunch nutrition balance, nutrient balance. It's kind of a bummer, I'm gonna have to just essentially write this down, right? So, I suppose, to, I mean, I'd rather just reference the archive or whatever from within here. So A, oh, so A is okay, supposedly, with the current balance. Oh, I see. So I have five of each type. I just need to balance them accordingly. So I actually got pretty lucky there with that initial swap. So that's kind of funny um, that that put that in the okay range. But uh, I'm going to be referencing this all the time, aren't I? All right, I'll just suck it up and um, copy it down, I guess. So it's one and then three and then three. And then fish is one and three and two. Salad is two and then one and then zero. So, oh, this represents carbs, protein, and fat, I guess. And then on the right hand side, is that pasta? Is that the pasta power? Three, one, two. And then whatever this is, soup, maybe? Question mark? <laughs> um, is one bread, two protein, and three, or and then one fat. Okay, so let's take a look now. So A is currently okay based on what we have, right? So A needs eight, ten, and eight, and it's good with what's currently given. What does B need? B needs seven, nine, and four. Seven, nine, and four means well, what food is gonna be really low in fat? It's really gonna come down to salad. So there's gonna be a hefty amount of salad regardless. It's gonna be a high combination of probably of soup and salad, I think. Right, B needs nine. That nine has to be the sum of five numbers. To me, that looks like, hmm. Three soups, a salad, and something else? No. Oh, I mean, what I was tempted first to think at first is four soups and a salad, right? Oh, and that actually adds up to five. I'm silly. <laughs> so I think that'll actually work well. So let's try four soups and a salad. So swap there. Um, Swap there, swap there, and then we'll swap there. Wait, what? Oh, so that combination is okay, so I can't even do anything with that anymore. Interesting. That's actually really interesting. So that must not have been the, the proper math anyways. So I think I just got kind of got lazy. Um, all right, so let's think about it again, right? So B needs seven, nine, four. Four soups and a salad would have worked, but that's not on the table anymore. So we have to do it some other way. If I have three soups, what am I at? I'm at 363. 363 puts me at a deficit of 431. 431 being created with two different things, right? 43 and 1. Hmm. So salad's not gonna work there, actually. Four, three, and one. 
So I don't think any of the remaining combinations work. So if we need to make up four, three, and one with two of these. We can't do salad and pasta. We can't do fish, we can't do meat. Actually, yeah, no. So if we need to make up four, three, and one with after the three soups, we only have one, I guess, like fat to give, and none of the remaining ones have just a single fat. So it can't be three soups. So that's not a combination we can actually work with. So then we probably need to have a, a bigger combination of fish and soup, right? Because B requires nine protein. So what if instead of so much um, soup, we had two fish, right? So two fish would put us at what? That would put us at two, six, and four. Three salads would put us way over, right? Wait, actually, no, wait. Why did I, uh, why did I write a seven there? Oh, I probably, I wrote a two. Yeah, so I think three salads might be okay. How much do we need, seven? Uh, no, not quite. So two salads would put us at six, eight, four. And then what would we need? One, one, zero, which does not exist, right? So that can't be it either. So then what is the right combination? We probably should try more pasta then, is what I'm tempted to think. So if we're gonna use more pasta, that's gonna bulk up the carbs quite a bit. So maybe something like pasta plus a salad. Yeah, so pasta plus salad puts me at Five, two, two. And then if I go with a soup, I'm at six, four, three. And then I have room for two more, right? And then I do a meat and a salad, I think? If I do meat, I am at what? I'm at seven, seven. Oh wait, no, meat puts me way over on that regard. So, Two salads would still be too much. Fish would be too much. So I would need more soup, I guess? No, because that's, I mean, I'm still, I'm too high with carbs. There's nothing with zero carbs. So maybe, maybe B is not a good one to actually really work through right now. I guess I should have considered which nutrients are most restricting, right? So if B requires seven carbs, there aren't too many things that, well, there are some things that are really high in carbs. There are some that are really low. There's not a lot that's in the middle ground. I feel like the four, the four fat though is, is what's really the limiting factor of this combination. Right, because it means I can't have meat and fish, for example. It means I can't have meat and pasta, for example. And if I have meat and soup, then the only stuff I can have left is salad. Would that work? No. It wouldn't, because I need seven carbs. Hmm. Could I do just meat and salad? No, I couldn't. So, actually, that exa essentially exhausts meat, right? So I can't have meat in bees' diet. So that's helpful, I guess. <laughs> Um, fish is very similar to meat, it just has one less fat. Is that helpful? Yes, because it opens the door to like a pasta and fish combination. If I do pasta and fish... I, that's not gonna work. So if pasta and fish happens, I'll 
only be able to add salad and that's gonna boost my carbs much more than my protein. So I can't do that. I'm tempted to think it's some combination of fish, soup, and salad. It's like fish, two soups. But I feel like I already tested that. And two salads? Like a fish, two soups, and two salads? Let's see here. Got one, three, two, and then we've got two, four, two, and then we've got four, two, zero. Seven, nine, and four. Did I really not test that before? Or did I just do the mental math wrong and you guys are gonna scream at me? I joke, you guys are actually really nice in the comments and it's much appreciated. But I guess that's what it is, right? A fish, two soups, and two salads. I, I genuinely thought I had tried that. But I guess not. <laughs> Either way, we're down to D and E, right? So let's look at those. So D requires what? 8, 10, and 9. E requires 9, 10, and 10. I feel like that's going to be a little more difficult to achieve, so let's aim for that. So if we're aiming for 9, 10, and 10, and we actually only have limited rations that we can use towards that now, right? So if we're aiming for 10 fat, for example, but we have very limited soup, and we have very limited salad, we actually only have one salad, right? That means we're going to be using a lot of the other stuff. So, what would bring us over? If we had two meats, that would be problematic, I think. Actually, let's think about this, right? So if 10 and 10 are both, you know, the protein and the fat are both even numbers, we need to do some combination where they're both going to end up even. Hmm... Well, the carbs will end up odd. We have three pastas. We couldn't do that though. So we can't use all three pastas and eat. I feel like I, I want to write down like, I feel like linear algebra would actually be super helpful, helpful for this, right? Like looking at a linear combination of these different uh, vectors to get your, you know, intended outcome. I feel like that's literally what this is, you know, designed around. But, um, so we're going to need some beefy stuff, meat and fish wise, right? So one meat, one fish, one soup. Two soups? No, one soup and two pastas. Meat, fish, soup, two pasta. Let's see. Meat, fish, one soup, and two pastas. I think that's gonna work for us. It is. One meat, one fish, a soup, and two pastas. One meat, a fish, a soup and two pastas. And then of course, by process of elimination, we have the other one solved. I just solved the crap out of this puzzle. <laughs> hey, um, aren't you getting a little too excited? Yeah, it's kind of freaking me out. Uh, did you see the screen? All right, so that's the green one. This looks like the password from the AV room and the infirmary. You did it! Now we can open the safe! You found a safe password. Okay. So now the question is, where do we get the other password, right? Can I activate the, uh, the puzzle again? Doesn't seem like it. Hmm full of things we found around the room, you know, the bottom of the machine where the tanks of water go. Drawer full of hot water, I don't need it anymore, I don't want it anymore. And then every time I interact with this, it just shows me that. Okay. Can I interact with this screen still? I know the most appropriate option in the blank area, then press the check button. Yes, I can. 
Hmm. That's odd. I should have been able to just do the same thing as before. Last time I converted the dates on the calendar pages to point to shelves and type that in. Like, yeah, 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 I got it. So now the question is, what's the hidden password, right? And we can still interact with that screen, meaning we have to input something there to get our hidden password. The only thing I can think of is that clue on the back of the map, right? So when we did that, where was the calendar note? The day the man was abducted. The day the man was abducted. Oh, is that us? Was that Christmas? I think that I think that's what it was, Christmas. Let's see what that looks like on our calendar. So Christmas would be the second row from the bottom and the second column, right? So that would be 13B. Let's let's give it a go. That is it. Wow, okay. The screen's blue now. Do you think this could maybe possibly be it? Yeah, it's probably the safe password. <clears throat> That's good, right? Well, there's one problem. The screen shuts off after a set amount of time. No, we need to be fast. I can do it. I've got a really good memory. All I need is a moment. That's funny. So now we've got that password down. You found a safe password. Well, did you memorize it? Indeed I did. It's locked away up here. Whew, what a relief. I do want to check real quick. Well, first of all, the safe is over here, but, um, which password is which again? The one on the right is the hidden file password. It's kind of how I have it stored in my head. But, so we have moon, sun, and sun. Moon, sun, and sun. Whew! I don't think that hidden file password was as obtuse as some of the other ones. Ha! Huh, it opened! I think the, the real jump was figuring out who the man was. And I think that might be the, the real stretch there. I got kind of lucky that I figured, that I, I realized who the man was referring to, but... If you didn't, then, I mean, there wasn't really much to, to figure out there. Because it's not like the clue that led to the hidden file password was obscure. In the previous ones, it was difficult to figure out, like, oh, how do I interpret this? What information do I even use to try to find the hidden file password? And this one, it was at least clear, like, this is the clue you need to interpret to get the hidden file password, and it's just a matter, matter of whether or not you remember or interpret it the right way. Um, which is better, in my opinion, than some of the other rooms. But anyways, piece of cake. All right. Let's see what we've got. First is... A map. It says floor B. The one we found in the infirmary said floor A. Yeah, so did the one in the lounge. Then that would make floor A the top floor, right? I mean, we rode the elevator down to get here. Yeah, you're right. Okay, let's keep looking. There's a lot of stuff in here. These must be... Okay, so there's gonna be the Ambidex room cards. Key cards, they have moons on them. Then these have to be the cards the announcer was talking about. We've got two of them, just like with the sun keys. You take one, Clover. Huh? Why? Well, you're a solo, right? Alice and I only need one. Oh, right. Got it. Now, what have we got left? A key. Is that the exit key? Yeah, it must be. This is our ticket out of here. Awesome. What are we waiting for? Let's go. Okay. Yeah, I mean, sounds about right. This is the exit. It's locked. All right, here we go. Okay. Do it. Three, two, one, and it's open. We've made it. Overall, I like the room quite a bit. I like the puzzles. Uh, I got tripped up on a couple of them, a little more than I would have liked, but but I think they were actually fun puzzles to solve, so yeah, that was that was a really good room. And it had some nice humor to it as well, which is always appreciated. But anyways, so now we're exiting and we're gonna head back, well, we're gonna exit and we're gonna find ourselves back here to our surprise that we've essentially looped around, right? An ambidex gate has been opened? What? Who's doing it this time? Is it Dio rushing everyone again? It's been so long since we've been at that part of timeline that I don't remember, but I think this is Dio rushing everyone. So it'll be interesting to see how everybody reacts in this particular timeline. But of course, we're gonna see all the drama that ensues in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know it might've been a little bit of a slow one um, as I work through some of these puzzles, but I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless and are looking forward to more story developments as the game continues. 
But until the next episode, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete. Thank <laughs> you.